can polystrate trees disprove evolution in millions of years? Well, they have nothing to do with evolution, and paleontologists and geologists have no problem explaining how trees became buried in multiple layers. What you're about to see is a typical creationist straw man argument. Are you ready for another sensational game of... Don't you just love it? The winner of this game is the one who correctly identifies which history provides the best explanation for the facts scientists observe. Is the best history the one recorded in the Bible, where an infinitely intelligent God creates the whole universe in six days, about 6,000 years ago? Or is it the one that starts with a big bang, where the whole universe has been slowly evolving for more than 13 billion years? My name is Percy Cooper. Let's meet our contestants. On the right, we have Dr. Chester Field, professor of philosophy at whoop de doo University. So a mythical professor of philosophy is about to discuss the fossil record? Heaven forbid they would ask an actual paleontologist. Welcome, Professor. Greetings, mortals. And on the left, we have Fred Farnstein, and he's a Walmart greeter. Hello. I'm really happy to be here. Well, at least they found a typical young Earth creationist. Mr. Farnstein, it's your turn to pick a topic. Okay, I'll take number two, fossils. Do you expect to win? Fossils prove evolution. Mr. Science, tell us about what scientists have observed in the fossil record. Paleontologists, scientists who study fossils, sometimes find things like this. A tree-like plant fossil extending many feet through separate layers of rock. These are called polystrate fossils. Wow! Thank you, Mr. Science! Actually, the only place you'll hear them called polystrate trees is in creationist literature or articles refuting creationist literature. Real geologists and paleontologists call them upright fossils or in situ trees. Audience, the question is... Evolution over millions of years, of course. As all the textbooks clearly show with cartoon diagrams, living things fossilize slowly over millions of years as the sediments gently built up around them and they... Oh dear! That's not correct! Of course it's not correct and no geologist would ever give that answer. The tree fossil in the image is from the well-known Joggins Formation in Nova Scotia and it's often featured in creationist literature. This formation was studied by Charles Lyell in the 1800s and the process of preserving the upright trees was explained way back then. Um, the Bible? The Bible says it was a global flood about 4,500 years ago. That would have buried many things quickly before they rotted completely. <laughs> Biological structures, like the cells of plants and animals, decompose fairly quickly upon death. The best history to explain this polystrate fossil must include a mechanism that would bury its entire length before the top decomposes. Slow burial over millions of years would not produce the fossils scientists observe today. Geologists realize that sometimes layers are formed quickly and others take millions of years due to their depositional environment. The layers around these trees obviously form quickly. Most, if not all, upright tree fossils are found in streambed deposits or volcanic layers, and these layers show rapid deposition. No one claims they took millions of years. The Joggins Formation was once part of an alluvial floodplain where a river was subject to massive annual flooding. It would overflow its banks and trees would be carried downstream, became stuck in various positions. They could easily have been covered in just a matter of years. Well, that's it for today, folks. See you next time on... If this were the result of a worldwide flood, we would expect to see these preserved upright trees throughout most sedimentary layers all over the world. We don't see that at all. The only logical conclusion is these trees became covered quickly in local events. This information is readily available in journals, books, on the internet, and has been published for over 150 years. Why do creationists keep misrepresenting what geologists say about these fossils? The only people they are fooling are the ones who haven't studied this at all. <laughs>